Today I'm taking you back to my natural habitat. Wait, not that one. This one. The racetrack. But this isn't just any racetrack. Set on a 328-acre plot in the Midwestern United States, Indianapolis Motor Speedway firmly holds a position at the heart of high-performance racing. The Indy 500 is a thrilling spectacle that features some of the fastest machines to ever cross the bricks. Each year, it's all about making the cars smaller, lighter and faster, which takes months of advanced planning, design, engineering and, of course, simulation. Join me as we take a peek behind the scenes to find out what enables these champions of speed to compete for glory year after year. I'm Miss Emma Walsh, and this is Driven by Simulation. Steeped in history, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway began its life in 1909 as a test track for automakers who sought an opportunity to test sustained top speeds of their latest cars. Naturally, it only took two years to shift casual speed trials into what would become one of the most famous motorsport events in all the world, the Indianapolis 500. The stakes are high at Indy, with over 300,000 spectators in attendance and millions tuning in from home, you either win big or fail big. This puts immense pressure on the race teams, from engineering to the garage to the pit lane and the drivers, to deliver, tune, and pilot a top finish. Today I'm in the pit lane with Honda Performance Development to find out just what it takes to compete in this storied setting. John, hi. Hi, how are you? you? Yeah, I'm really good, thanks. I'm super yeah. excited. It's my first time ever at an Indy race. I think I chose the right one to come to. Oh yeah, this, this is the race <laughs> for Indy car. This is the race. Um, right. Tell me a little bit about your role uh, at HPD. What do you do? So at HPD, um, I'm the lead of the aerodynamics group. Um, so basically everything you kind of see on the IndyCar, um, everything that kind of air flows over, we're, we're kind of responsible for um, getting information to our teams and really understanding it to help them make the best decision possible. Yeah. See, uh, aerodynamics is super important. Yeah. You want the car to be faster, you want to win. Yeah. What are some of the problems that you face uh, with the race cars and how do you use simulation to, to help those problems? It's really understanding, like when you're at the track, um, the boundary conditions change so much. I mean, the temperature changes, the wind changes. Yeah. Um, yeah the, the track temperature changes, so the tire responds differently. So for us, it's really trying to use simulation to try to understand all these different variables, but also control the variables too, which simulation does very well. Um, you know, we, we can come here to track, we can measure data, and in simulation, you could theoretically match the exact same conditions that you see here at the track in your simulation yeah. to get the same, potentially get the, to get the same error numbers, really. Yeah, so you're throwing a whole bunch of stuff into it, yep. giving you the best uh, yes. outcome, and it's saving you loads and loads of time. Yes, yeah, the, 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 real, the real benefit of simulation is like, as opposed to, we do a lot of wind tunnel testing too, but wind tunnel testing, we can only be in there so much, right? Um, and we're limited on the hours. Yeah. Um, really, the, the simulation is really a matter of how many CPU you can really throw up the solution. Yeah. We can really do it anytime. Um, so we have, you know, guys sitting back in the office that if we have something that comes up here this week, we can ask them, hey, can you take a look at this? Can you try to run this change? And, and they can do it. We don't have yeah. to wait for a car to come available to go take it to a wind tunnel or to uh, another test. So you get the best solution from them and then you bring it to track and this yeah. is what the two weeks is for, right? To practice, get it out yeah. of track and see if it works? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. We use the simulations, we use the data here from the track and from the wind tunnel um, to validate our CFP. Because we, like, with simulation, you always have to keep evolving, keep working on it, keep providing. So the data we grab here today and this week um, and then the data we have from the wind tunnel test that we do goes, basically goes back Back, um, and we, we we validate it with the CFD. We make sure that our CFD is, is representing really what we see here at the track. Because ultimately, that's what matters. That's what wow. matters. Wow. So our mission is to just win, and we're responsible for all racing that Honda does in North America. So for Honda, it's going to be IndyCar. That's mm -hmm. the pinnacle. And then for Acura, we're in the IMSA uh, top class for prototypes. And where do you see the future going with Ansys? So I think. It's incredibly important these days where we are able to simulate. Um, the days of it's making a part and testing on track are gone. It's mm -hmm. way too expensive for us. So just as part of people development and as part of technology development, it's important that 
anytime the engineers come up with an idea that they have an opportunity and the right technical partner and the right technical package to simulate this in a virtual environment. And then we can take the best ideas from that and then make the parts and go testing with it. But it, it speeds up development. Yeah. It makes things more efficient. It lowers costs for everybody involved. And also more importantly, it helps develop everybody with an HP and Honda. You know, yeah. that's just the next cutting edge for the future. It is all about winning. But let's take a step back from the track for a moment. All the way back to where these cars are first conceptualized and developed. Resting upon a sunny mountaintop in Southern California, we find HPD headquarters. Having modern simulation capabilities, CFD, FEA, vehicle simulation, these things allow us to iterate so many more design potential opportunities than we could in the past. It's a great tool for us. It allows us to iterate very quickly and try to do a lot of stuff that maybe we wouldn't, we wouldn't even try before. Um, and especially with, with ANSYS CFD, you know, we're not just looking at the aerodynamics, we're also looking at the at the thermal management, the cooling. And this is something that you can't test in the wind tunnel. Um, we can't run an engine in the wind tunnel. We can't have a hot system to create heat and see how it cools. But this is something that we can do in, in CFD, especially at Indy 500, where the speeds can get up to 240 miles per hour on the straightaways and 230 in the corners. Any performance advantage in drag, aerodynamic downforce, any cooling advantages, even things like driver feel, like is the driver comfortable in all those scenarios can make a difference. Um, and we have hundreds of people here working in all different aspects to, to make that happen. Um, we provide information to our drivers. For example, how do you drive at high speed when near rubber cars? Oh, there's a lot of talk in motorsport about the dirty air and how it affects how when you're behind a car, your aerodynamics become worse. You lose, your drag goes down, but also your downforce goes down, makes the car harder to handle. Providing our drivers with simulation information to tell them this is where you should drive if you want to set up a pass on someone is incredibly valuable. Recently, we partnered with ANSYS and, and other hardware providers to develop a multi-car pack running simulation of Indy 500. And this is by far the largest simulation we've done here. And normally without this kind of hardware support and, and ANSYS support to help us develop this and validate it, we probably would have never pursued it. We found that after the lead car, for the most part, the performance of all the successive cars, while reduced compared to the lead car, was very similar to each other. That might have had a psychological effect to help our drivers kind of feel like, no, you're not at a supreme disadvantage being back here. You just kind of have to work your way up the field. It really is incredible to see how much testing and iteration goes into these machines. But you know, I'm a racing driver at heart, so I need to know just what the drivers are feeling when they jump into that cockpit. So CFD is a massively important tool that we use as a team. So whenever we go testing, A, it's really expensive. B, the conditions vary greatly. And so we like to, especially the, the clever guys back at the track, they like to be able to have everything very, um, you know, conditions being the same and like very back to back so it's accurate because we go out there and we might get a tow, the weather might be different. Um, so for us doing back to backs on, on aero stuff, for example, is not as accurate as we can do CFD. Yeah. So um, we can run through also a lot more things a lot quicker and a lot cheaper. Yeah. So what we tend to do is we use that as a background tool and we do all of the work behind the scenes on that. And then we come to the track and the things that we found to be good, we will back to back and double check and like, and then see where we go from there. Unfortunately, nowadays we don't have much uh, practice time in motorsport. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting very, very tight on how much days we can test stuff and try and improve our setup and especially aero balance and all that stuff. Um, and for the Indy 500, it's huge. We do a ton of simulations. It's basically like we're putting the car on track without being on track, actually. So, um, yeah, we take a lot of information from that. We try and uh, develop new 
error stuff for when we're on traffic. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's just helping us a ton uh, to try and win more races. Making you faster. Yeah. Making you win. Yes. So Honda's been super successful um, over the years. Simulation has got a lot to do with that, right? Yeah, a lot to do with it. And, yeah. and again, it's, it's really being able to kind of use use all the capabilities of the simulation, of, of the CFD, to really understand the fluid flow, right? Um, um, it really just gives us that that extra level of knowledge to help to help our teams help make decisions. Can you uh, tell me, like, explain a little bit of how you use Cloud? Yeah, so we, we utilize the Ansys Cloud for our, uh, our CFD running. Um, the guys are using it every day um, for, for setting up these massively large simulations, massively large meshes. Millions of millions of uh, cells, and um, yeah, we're we're using it every day, um, trying to get information as fast as possible, uh, using all the capability of all the different different options we have with the cloud, with the CPU, with the processors. Uh, so we're always trying to make sure we can we run as 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 efficiently as possible to get the solution, uh, not only as quickly as possible, as cost effectively as possible. Well, I'd say it's undeniable. Success at this historic speedway is driven by simulation. Join me next time as we get an inside look at crash safety with one of the hardest running motorsports to ever hit the pavement. I'm Emma Walsh and this is Driven by Simulation.